We all know what an SLR camera is. We all know that professionals and amateur photographers prefer to use them. Now imagine a full functioning DSLR camera, but smaller and more compact. A camera like that is the same as a DSLR camera, but without the reflecting mirror inside it, which gives the camera manufacturer the ability to make a compact system camera, so basically when you remove the lens, you will see the image sensor instead of a mirror. This technology isn't new. I have reviewed a couple of cameras that are based on this technology, but the camera that I will be reviewing today is the only mirrorless camera system that I've tested that I would confidently compare to a mid-range DSLR camera. And by mid-range, I mean cameras that people like true photographers and amateur photographers would know how to use. I'm the set reviewer, and this is my review of the Panasonic Lumix GH2. The Panasonic Lumix GH2 is, like I mentioned, a mirrorless camera system. The body is a lot smaller and more compact than a DSLR camera, making this camera more portable. But even though it is small and compact, it's a lot heavier than it seems, which is a good thing because it makes the camera feel more sturdy. The model that I have here came with a 14 to 140 mm zoom lens with a built-in optical image stabilizer. Included in the box was the camera, the lens, a lens hood, a 7.2 watt 1200 milliamp hour battery, a cover for the battery, a battery charger, a standard definition AV cable, a USB cable, a pouch for the lens, a stylus, lens covers, and an image processing program called Silky Pix, which is compatible with PC and Mac. The lens pouch is made out of a very sturdy material that has a soft interior, which protects the lens when traveling or when it's not in use. Taking a tour around the camera, starting at the front, you'll notice a rubber grip on the handle that has a leathery texture to it. Then there's the lens mount and the lens release button, and finally the autofocus light. At the left side is a 2.5mm combination port for either a remote shutter release or an external microphone. Below that is a mini HDMI port and an oddly shaped USB and AV output combination port. At the back is a button, which you can use to manually switch between the display and the electronic viewfinder, a focus wheel for the viewfinder, the image playback button, the AFAE lock, which locks the focus and the exposure, a setting wheel, a quick menu button, a display button, the four-way navigation, which also functions as different settings, so we have ISO and white balance, and the other two are function buttons, which I will get to later. In the center is the OK and menu combination button, and finally, the erase and shutter speed effect combination button. At the top, you will find all kinds of controls. The wheel on the left lets you set different focus points, while the little switch at the side lets you choose between manual focus, autofocus continuous, and autofocus single. Next to that is the flash release, obviously the flash, and at the top of it are two stereo microphones and a hot shoe mount. Then you have your different settings, as well as two little switches. The one at the top lets you select between single shot, continuous shooting, auto bracket, which takes multiple photos with different exposure settings, and the last one is a 10 second shutter timer. The switch below that is the on and off switch, and finally you have the shutter release, instant record button, and a third function button, which I will get into later. At the right side you'll find the SD card slot, and at the bottom is a standard tripod mount and the battery compartment. The display is a very sensitive touch screen that is very detailed. You can use the touch feature to set different settings quickly and you can also select your focus points. For an example, in autofocus, you touch an object on the screen and the camera focuses on it. In manual focus mode, you touch an object and the camera zooms into the object so you can focus more precisely. When the camera is on, there will be a small little icon on the display, which you can tap on and that will enable the camera to focus and take the picture immediately when you touch the screen. As I said, the screen is very sensitive to the touch, and since they included this little nice stylus, there's no need to use your fingers, but of course you can if you want. The electronic viewfinder is also very detailed, and like most cameras, it's got an infrared sensor that will disable the display when you move it close to the viewfinder. If for some reason the sensor breaks or you need to see the display while something is close to the viewfinder, you do have the option of manually switching between the two. The display tilts and swivels in all directions, which is very handy. You can easily do self-portraits and shoot high or low angle shots. 
Another great feature of a swiveling display is that you can make it face towards the camera, which will protect it when you're traveling or not in use. The camera has these three function buttons, one at the top and two at the back. They basically are shortcuts that you can assign to do certain tasks, like set the aspect ratio, adjust the flash, enable or disable the guideline, and a lot more. I will not be going over the specifications in the review, but you can check them out by clicking the link in the description below. The one of many things that I absolutely love about this camera is the video mode. This camera can record videos in 1080i, 60 frames per second, which to be honest sucks, but you can also record 1080p, 24 frames per second, which is awesome. When you look at this camera, you might not expect much video quality, but to be honest, it is by far the best video quality that I have ever seen on any DSLR camera. I did some research and according to a lot of professional filmmakers, they are using this very camera to shoot professional videos. It outperforms cameras like the Canon 60D and the Nikon D7000 as far as video goes, even though the frame rate is lower. There is nearly any noise when shooting in low light and the video is so crisp and clear that it's like it came from a professional camera. It also auto or manually focuses while recording, depending on your settings. You can also purchase a 3D lens and on it you can record videos in full HD in 3D. The photos that the GH2 takes are also stunning. They are very sharp and having all the controls by your hand instead of digging through the menu system is great when it comes to taking pictures. The stock lens is heavy and well made. The zoom rocker has a rubber finish which improves the grip, but the focus rocker is purely plastic but very smooth. Despite all the good things I've said about the camera, there are some bad sides as well. I'm a guy with really big hands, so holding a compact camera like this for a long period of time can be quite uncomfortable, and the grip is pretty small. I would have liked to see a 3.5mm audio input instead of a smaller 2.5mm, because chances are that you will need to buy an adapter. It doesn't really cost much, so it's not really a big deal. 24 frames per second in video might not be a lot, and it's certainly no good for slow motion, but you can always decrease the video quality for a higher frame rate. There are so many things about this camera that I would love to talk about. As I said, the only major thing that I had to complain about was holding it for a long period of time. It can't be quite uncomfortable for a guy with really big hands, but other than that, I am absolutely in love with this camera. I would definitely recommend this camera to you if you are looking for a compact camera system with outstanding performance, especially if you enjoy making videos. If you are looking for a camera system with interchangeable lenses and advanced features for making videos, this is the camera that you should definitely check out. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to catch my future reviews. Also make sure to check out the links in the description below for more technical data and information about the camera.